Some people spend a lot of time getting the news. Other people spend a lot of time getting it to them. No matter how far you go to get the news, the Associated Press, better known as AP, has probably gone a lot further. To Vietnam, for instance, a napalm strike in the heart of the jungle is 12,000 miles from New York City. But Peter Arnett, Saigon correspondent for the Associated Press, is there, along with photographer Horst Foss, also an AP man. Their job is to spot the story and get the news halfway around the world and back to New York headquarters so that 8,000 members and subscribers of this immense organization can get the story to you. Actually, for Peter and Horst, both Pulitzer Prize winners for their work in Vietnam, the story begins in the 30-man Saigon Bureau of the Associated Press. A check on the assignment board tells of the day's missions. And Horst prepares for the pictures as well as the mud. Peter Arnett confirms their destination on the map at briefing headquarters, and the two men are off. They follow a long tradition of AP war coverage. In 1876, part-time correspondent Mark Kellogg rode with General Custer into the Battle of the Little Bighorn and died in the massacre. In Vietnam, two AP men have been killed and nine wounded in the past two years alone. Peter Arnett is a newsman, but he carries a camera on most missions. According to Horst Foss, I cannot think of any correspondent who worked for the AP in Vietnam without a camera around his neck. And every photographer, day in and out, tries to bring news items along from his field trips. The strike comes quickly. Back in the Saigon Bureau, news editor Bob Tuckman takes down Peter's story over the telephone. Correspondent Ed White, in charge of the Saigon Bureau, locates the dateline on the map with his colleagues, then edits the copy. And teletype operators begin to transmit the story by wire. When Horst Foss returns from the battle area, he goes over the negatives of his film, as does photo editor John Nance. Darkroom technicians turn the negatives into prints, either color or black and white. And editor Nance checks the schedule to have them transmitted. He'll send a courier with photo prints to the local telegraph office, where pictures are radioed from Saigon through the Tokyo telegraph office to the Associated Press office in Tokyo, where a photo editor checks prints and sends them off to San Francisco. From there, they are sent through a monitoring device to New York. In New York City, at the Associated Press building, headquarters for the entire network, the picture winds up at the fourth floor, where a caption writer may be set to work just 30 minutes after the picture left Saigon. In another corner of this vast newsroom, Heads of news departments are already meeting to discuss Peter Arnett's story, along with others being covered at the moment, and developing situations. While they meet, a microphone connects them to AP News executives in Washington and Chicago. When foreign desk editors have checked the story, they prepare to send it out to the four corners of the globe. Copy is sent by teletype machines, manned by skilled operators. The operator strikes the letter keys as he would a typewriter thus producing a punched paper or tape, which feeds into a transmitter and sends signals along the circuit. The signals activate keys on receivers all along that particular circuit, causing them to print out the story letter by letter for editors all over the world. Some newspapers also receive a special tape along with printed copies of each story. This is called automatic typesetting tape. When the tape is fed into line-casting machines at newspaper offices, 
stories are automatically set into type. Moreover, the galley of type that the printer pulls out is automatically set in lines of equal width. Justified, it's called. Computers do the job here, and from these galleys, it's just a short step to newsprint and Peter Arnett's byline. Meanwhile, back at the photo desk in New York, the wire photo operator receives the incoming picture and clamps it to a cylinder. As the cylinder revolves under a tiny beam of light, signals are sent along a circuit and recorded on special photographic paper at the receiving end in bureaus and newspaper offices. When the transmission is finished, the picture is automatically developed, dried, and dropped into a tray. Total time, less than nine minutes. Wire Photo has been transmitting Associated Press pictures since 1935. Since the explosion of the Hindenburg. And the most famous picture from World War II. A few years later, the Berlin Wall. 1963. Death by fire for a South Vietnamese Buddhist. November 1963. History in Dallas. Today, AP pictures are also transmitted in color, either by wire or by mail. That's how Horst Foss caught the napalm strike and how you got the news. There's one more way that the Associated Press gets the news to you. At the Broadcast News Department in New York, incoming teletypes record news from all over the world. These get turned into hourly news summaries for some 2,900 radio and television members near and far. Even as far as Nome, Alaska, where the dialect is Eskimo. You see, even though the Associated Press doesn't print its own stories for the public, you don't have to wade through wire copy or wrap yourself in wire photos to see what the Associated Press has to say. You can read it in the newspaper or catch it on television or hear it wherever you are. And now the latest news from the wires of the Associated Press. Of course, New York and Saigon aren't the only Associated Press bureaus. Besides member newspapers who contribute a great deal of their own news to the wires, AP staffers work from bureaus all over the world. And whether someone's going up into space or coming down to Earth, or whether there's a crisis at Checkpoint Charlie, or an interview in Mexico, or a fire next door, the speed and the coverage are just the same. So fast that a bulletin can go around the world in a minute. So well linked that what happens in India today can turn up tomorrow in your local paper. Whatever the hour, wherever the country, the Associated Press can cover it. It's the largest news cooperative in the world, tracing its history back to 1848. Since then, the news gathering traditions have remained. The cooperative expanded. Today, in the United States alone, more than 110 Associated Press bureaus are located in all 50 states. The Washington Bureau, with 150 men and women, ranks first in size outside of New York headquarters. President Johnson is usually the top story, and the Associated Press has been covering presidents for a long time. Back in 1865, Washington correspondent Lawrence Gobright was at Ford's Theater just minutes after President Lincoln was shot. His lead is a classic in brief journalism. The president was shot in a theater tonight and perhaps mortally wounded. Today, President Johnson's every activity may be covered by AP's Frank Cormier with a question at a press conference, or by columnist James Marlowe with a news analysis for the paper. Senate activities are the province of Jack Bell, veteran newsman who has headed the AP's large Senate staff for 28 years. Jack Bell writes his stories from the Associated Press booth in the Senate Press Gallery, then gives them to a teletype operator right in the booth. The operator transmits the story directly to the Associated Press Washington office, where an editor checks the copy. As the story moves out on the wire to AP members, it's given a final reading by Washington News Editor Marvin Arrowsmith. A copy of the story reaches New York at the same time as it reaches members. At the general news desk, editors check the story for fairness and accuracy. Then send it to the A-wire. 
prime news distribution circuit in this country for national and international news. The A-Wire operates around the clock. Its editor is in charge of pressing the buttons that tell which story should move and when. So that you can get Jack Bell's story right away. Of course, you're not the only one getting AP News. Wires from the Associated Press reach 900 million people in more than 100 countries through 8,500 newspapers, radio, and television stations. From the World Services desk in New York, manned by news editor Webb McKinley, news from all over the world is distributed to Associated Press subscribers outside the United States. In simultaneous transmission, a story will move to Europe, Africa, and Asia, always in English. News moves in Spanish, too, from the Latin American desk, also in New York. What else goes on at New York headquarters? Financial and business news, as well as up-to-the-minute stock market prices tabulated by computer. And there are specialists, experts in the field like Alton Blakesley, dean of AP Science Writers. Daily columnist Hal Boyle, who picked up a Pulitzer Prize for his frontline coverage of World War II. AP men have won a total of 21 Pulitzers. And there's Irving Desfor, camera columnist, trying out a new technique. His column is one of many provided by the Associated Press on such topics as cooking, stamps, home building, and women's news. News in depth is the specialty of the news features department. Their bylines are famous. Sid Moody, John Wheeler, Bernie Gavzer, Jules Lowe. Special correspondent Saul Pett, whose feature stories, like one on the credibility gap, get big display in newspapers. The Associated Press is a cooperative. That means it's owned by its members and that it makes no profit. Membership meets annually in New York to hear reports and discuss operations. Members also elect the board of directors. 18 men who serve without pay and meet three times a year in New York to review all worldwide operations. The board elects the president. Right now, it's Paul Miller, currently president of Gannett Newspapers. The board also appoints a general manager and gives him authority to run the operation. Since 1962, it's been former war correspondent Wes Gallagher. These are some of the people at the top. People in charge of the AP staffers, who in turn are in charge of getting the news and getting it to you. Mark Twain put it this way. There are only two forces that can carry light to all corners of the globe, the sun in heaven and the Associated Press down here.